of analysis. And so the, that's the, the real difference between these two things, is the dynamic tools are doing their work at runtime, the static tools do their work at compile time, and as such, they might be looking for the same kinds of things, but they'll go about it in a much different way. So if we go to the next slide, what are the benefits and what are the pros, what are the cons? So first, let's talk about the pros of dynamic tools. A dynamic tool, they typically excel at finding memory types of problems. Anything that has to do with um, accessing memory that's out of bounds, allocating memory and forgetting to deallocate memory, or deallocating memory and using that memory after it's been freed, they're great at that. Why is that? Um, well, it's because the way that you know, you get to instrument the code is you instrument oftentimes around reads and writes. And you can key off the of function calls and, and understand the, the set function calls, for example, malloc and free. Um, but they are, uh, on the flip side of that, they won't necessarily uh, understand interfaces that, that are higher level than that. For example, if you were to implement your own memory allocator, and, and allocate a lot of memory up front, and then dole it out to the um, individual uh, pointers of the code, it may be harder for these dynamic tools to track that, uh, because essentially they're instrumenting the code based on reads and writes and based on their understanding of the interface. Another pro is that they're going to they're pinpoint exactly what happened on a particular uh, execution trace of the program. It is very much a, um, a, a Band-Aid, if you will, because they, if you observe a problem by that first definition of bug, if you actually observe something that happens bad in the code and you have a test case for it, you can just stick the dynamic tool right on top of that, and it will keep track of what's going on for you. And as such, when it discovers a problem in that particular execution case, it's going to be able to tell you. And that's a, that's a great strength. So when you're, you know, a bug comes in at 6 p.m. on a Friday night and you want to go home, well, the dynamic tool is going to be able to help you get there because it's going to be able to look at that, that particular case. They end up having a very low false positive rate because of, of this, because they're actually, um, they're actually watching what's going on at, in, a, in a particular execution trace. There's no guesswork. Um, yes, they might have to make simplifying assumptions to, and not keep track of everything from a performance standpoint. But uh, for the most part, usually what, what comes out of these tools is, is correct. And then the last bullet is, is similar to what I was speaking about earlier, just the obviously relevant results. The chances are you're going to run the dynamic tool when you've observed a problem um, and to make sure that, that, that it's OK. Or you, know, you might use it to, um, to make sure that even if you don't see a symptom, that things are happening correctly at execution time. But the fact that you're able to run the program in that context means when it finds a problem, it's something that could actually happen. So what are the pros on static tools? So uh, the static tool, because it's analyzing the source code, it actually can detect a very wide range of coding flaws. It's not as limited to uh, memory corruption type problems like the, the dynamic tools. It's going to be able to, to search for all sorts of things, including potentially concurrency problems or security vulnerabilities. Mm. Also look for dead code in the system, logical fallacies in the code, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot more that the static tools can do um, because they aren't instrumenting the code. Another big pro to the static tools is you don't require any test cases to find problems. You can essentially start finding bugs in the code without running the code. And you know, the, on the dynamic tool side, this, you, you ran the code. But on the static tool side, by not running the code, what this buys you is you aren't tied to your test suite. In some sense, the dynamic tools is only going to find they're only going to find things that were executed, um, and so you still have the problem of, of test case coverage and making sure your test suite covers the code correctly. This isn't a problem with static tools. They can try to uh, analyze all the different possibilities of the code, all the different paths. Um, if you have a if you have a good static analysis tool, and and as such, you don't you don't have to write any test cases to find bugs on obscure paths through the code. In our experience, you get a lot more defect reports out of a static tool, and actual defects, not false positives. But you get a lot more defects out of a static tool than you get out of a dynamic tool. And this shouldn't be surprising when you think about the sheer volume of paths that a static tool can analyze versus a dynamic tool. If 
and of course this is a low ball estimate for most real systems, but even if you had a billion paths through the code, a billion different execution paths, well a static analysis tool is going to be able to analyze that for you in, in you know, some amount of time that, that's probably close to the compilation time or a couple of times the build time. Running your program a billion times to get all the different answers from the dynamic tool, well of course that would take much, much longer, even if it was a second per run. Well, you know, a billion seconds is, I think, something like 31 or 32 years. Um, so it's a lot faster, and you can get a lot more results as a, because of this speed. Because you're analyzing all billion different possibilities, you're going to get a lot more defects. So we've seen, you know, 10x, 100x, maybe even more in terms of what a static analysis can um, provide in terms of number of bugs over the dynamic equivalence of looking for the same kinds of things. Uh, the other pro to static tools is really finding bugs at the earliest point in the software development life cycle. As soon as the code is written, you can use a static tool to analyze it and to determine if there's problems with it. And, and that's a really nice benefit, whereas on the dynamic side, you do need to wait until you put the whole application together before you can actually run the thing to, to try out the dynamic tools. And modulo unit testing. Of course, you can use dynamic tools when you have unit tests if your unit tests are built, built well. But uh, static tools really just allow you to nail those bugs right away. So what's the flip side? What are the cons? Well, I, I mentioned some of this already in, in the discussion of the difference between static and dynamic on the pro side, but with the dynamic tools, uh, the, they're only as good as your test suite. And that means that if your test suite doesn't cover any of your code, well, your dynamic tools aren't going to cover any of your code either. So the, the benefit there is if your test suite is stellar and wonderful, well, then your dynamic tools are probably going to be able to weed out a, a good chunk of your defects. Um, another con is the performance hit that you will take with a dynamic tool. And it's not just a matter of the time spent, but dynamic tools can be, you know, as little as 2x the performance, as much as, you know, 10, 20, 30x in terms of how much time it takes to actually execute the program when it is instrumented with the dynamic tool uh, infrastructure. The, the downside, of course, is, is time, first of all, but more importantly, there are issues that will manifest themselves only when the code is run without the instrumentation. And I'm sure you know everybody who's written code for more than a couple of weeks has experienced the unfortunate circumstance when, when, when running the code in debug mode or under the debugger, the behavior is slightly different than when running without the debugger. And, and those kinds of timing issues uh, can manifest themselves to actually mask the problems that are occurring. And, in essence, make the, the dynamic tool somewhat non-deterministic because the timing might be different, especially if you are talking about a uh, multi-threaded application where um, there are going to be timing concerns, or if you have a, a, a smaller system for which you know the timing is crucial that certain things happen because of timeouts or or whatnot. When you throw in this extra in infrastructure to uh, to instrument the code, well, it's going to mess up all your timings. So it kind of limits the scope of what it can find. It can actually mask bugs. As I mentioned, bugs are discovered a little bit later in the software development lifecycle with dynamic tools because you have to put the whole application together. And then, of course, there's the false negative issue, meaning because it is tied so heavily to your test suite, you're going to miss a lot of bugs. And you shouldn't think that your dynamic tools are trying out the case, all the cases in the code. Um, they're going to miss anything that you don't have a test case for. And so that's, that can potentially be a problem, but get a false sense of security, if you will. On the static tool side, what are the cons? Well, traditionally, one of the biggest problems with static tools is the notion of false positives. And that's why I say watch out for the false positive problem. Uh, static tools, going back to Lint, and we'll talk a little bit more about Lint later, but have been known to report you know, tens or even hundreds of reports or warnings for every real bug. And, and again, it goes back to this definition of what is a bug. So for the strictest definition of bug, you know, it might be 